Welcome back to another episode of Zero to 60, and it's late afternoon. The day has not gone to plan, but I'm about to start fitting the coilovers to the 335. She's still parked where she was yesterday when we were filming, and covered in dust. But, let's do a cold start. Oh. It's just so, so smooth for such a high performance car. All right, let's get her up on the hap lift and get on with it. So I got the wheels off, she's up in the air, and before I start tearing it apart, let's have a quick look at how bad each of these shocks are. So this is the right rear one. This one did feel particularly bad. You can see we've got the bump stop, which is completely disintegrated. Let's see if we can see, yeah, you can see here, all that oil and grease, that is from the oil coming out of the shock. Wasn't actually leaving a pool on the ground, but definitely leaking shocks. And let's check this one. Yeah, same thing. Oil all built up on the shaft, well, on the shock body. This one, yep. There's the bump stop from that one. So both rear shocks are blown. And front one, yeah. Yeah, you can see all the oil residue. Look at it all. That's oil with dirt, but obviously the oil has to be leaking for it to come out. Um, bump stop. Yeah, she's all crumbly as well. Oh, sorry, bloody torches in the way. But yeah, that one is all crumbly as well up in there. So bump stop's knackered. That one's leaking. Now the other one that didn't feel terrible was this. Uh, no, she's leaking as well. Yeah, you see all the oil that's weeped out. And this bump stop. This bump stop is knackered but it's not crumbling like the other ones. So there you go, definitely safe to say all of my shocks are pretty much cooked. Okay, so fit the new coilovers. I feel like, starting with the rear, oh, actually, I should probably check. So, one thing I mentioned in yesterday's video, I wasn't sure about the positioning of the sway bar link pin holder. Uh, I know the BCs, well, I'm, I think the BCs, come with different sway bar link pins because they're a different length. So if we assume this sits in the, the front knuckle there, got about five or six inches to where the link pin is. And looking on this one, yes, yeah, similar distance, okay. So using no science at all, using my fingers, it feels like it's about the same distance. So hopefully we will get away with not needing aftermarket link pins. Um, I'm going to do it off camera, but I'm also just going to have a quick look with the pry bar. Just make sure that no bushings have got any excessive play. When I got this car, I did actually replace all the front control arms, uh, but I didn't do anything with the rear. Uh, so the rear is all 150,000 kilometer original M Sport bushings. Um, but I'm just going to make sure they're all good, but I'm not going to do it on camera. In the meantime, I will start on the back. Now with doing the rear coilovers, you've got to get the interior pulled out. So I'll get on with that and uh, we'll get these rear shocks out. Okay, so the car's back down at normal height so I can get into the boot to get things taken apart. Uh, I check the bushes, nothing's jumping out at me, everything seems completely normal in regards to any tolerances or any, any movement I can get out of the bushes, so that's good. Um, now these are the parts that go into each rear corner. Uh, basically we have the shock absorber. I have changed the shock absorber on an E92 before, relatively easy to do. Um, but the other part is the spring, and I'll probably do a better comparison once I've got the original spring out. But we've got the new spring, and then the spring seat, and it's these threads that will give us the height adjustment once we're in there and give it that coilover effect. Now, I need to make a correction from yesterday's video because I didn't properly look at the rear shocks, and I hadn't been in here today until I started to film, but I was just working out a plan of attack on how to fit them, and the rear shocks are adjustable. I didn't think they were. They've got about 22 clicks of rebound adjustment. Um, 
which is the same as the fronts, I think, from memory. Uh, but basically, if you're unaware with what these adjusters do on your cheap coilovers, on that piston diagram that I showed you yesterday, a rebound adjuster literally just bypasses the piston. Now, you can get different designs of adjusters, but what you're twisting here will... There'll be a rod that goes all the way down through the shaft, right down to where the piston is inside the body, and then at the end of that, that will just be on a thread. So even though you feel clicks, the clicks are actually nothing to do with the adjustment. It's just so you can keep track of how much you've undone or closed the, the valve, I guess, the adjuster. And then normally, um, the ones we used to use in the motorbikes were a needle and seat. And they were basically a V-shaped needle that would close in like that. So the more that you brought the adjuster out, the more oil that would flow and bypass the piston. And I'll try and give you a quick example of that. So that is now fully wound in. So the adjuster is closed off and more oil will be forced to go through the piston and through the valving in the shock. So if I just compress it down, which is quite hard to do when it's like that, and you'll see the time it takes for that to extend back out. You can see it's moving, hopefully you can see that, it's moving quite slowly. But we'll let it finish. Very slowly. So that's how the shock's gonna perform in its fully stiff setting. She's still moving. Still moving. And what's in, I guess this is another thing that a lot of people don't realize. The reason shocks extend when you compress them like this with no spring, because they're under pressure, they'll have nitrogen pressurizing the oil inside to stop with the cavitation yesterday. But as you push the shaft down into the body, the actual shaft displaces the, the oil and the nitrogen inside. So what it's doing, it's basically just squeezing the volume of the shaft back out of the shock body. Anyway, we're gonna wind it right out to fully open. And to be fair, fully open probably happens at about halfway through the adjustment curve but we'll push it back down and you'll see how much faster it comes up this time so significantly quicker so whatever adjuster they've got going on in there is capable of making a big big difference to the dampening now these are called rebound adjusters everyone in the bike and the car industry always refers to them rebound adjusters but as they are literally just bypassing that main piston on the shaft they do affect compression and rebound I'm going to get the boot liner pulled out and we'll get the shock off first because I know how to do that. Um, but I'll give you an update once I've got the boot liner out. And some idiot put a subwoofer in this, so give me a few minutes. All right, so we've got the top nut undone. Uh, I ended up doing that by just moving the, just moving the um, trim panel away. And these have a 16 mil nut on the top and they have a, uh, like a six mil locking nut that you're supposed to be able to hold it with. And that's how you uh, undo the main 16 mil nut, but my one broke. So I ended up doing vice grips on the shock. Now, the bottom shock bolt is undone. They're just held in with a rubber, but this one wants to be a bit of a the arch. Ah, there it is. I'm gonna compress it again. Ta -da! And then we have one shock absorber. One completely knackered blown shock absorber. Just make sure it's some light. Yeah, and you can tell it's definitely blown because it doesn't extend itself out anymore. You can compress it and it stays compressed. She's definitely knackered. Now that is pretty dangerous driving a car with suspension like that. Bloody hell. Yeah, I had no dampening. Shit. Don't do what I did. Always do your suspension before you put big turbos on. There's a little bit of dampening there, but she's not good. <laughs> and if I can push them down that quick, they definitely weren't doing much in the car. Okay, so that's the shock out. Uh, next, it's a matter of getting the spring out. Single. Okay, so I undid the lower, or the outer control arm bolt, which is that one there. And I know a lot of people say to undo the inner control arm bolt, but I haven't. I'm hoping this has enough play. Oh, actually, it's just down on the jack. If we get down a little bit more. Okay, so the jack is off the control arm. And hopefully. Uh, yeah, that Ryobi light is shit. Hopefully that will give me enough to get the spring out. Oh, bloody jack's in the way. Oh, 
All right, third time lucky. There we go, as I've managed to squash my hands. Okay, so the spring's out of its spring seat. And that is now out. And I'm just gonna get the rubber piece because we need to inspect that, make sure it's all good. Very dirty, but it's all in one piece. Okay, okay, so that is the old stuff all next to the new stuff. The spring all looks pretty straightforward. So we're gonna have to reuse the lower spring seat. This one goes down in the control arm and it will sit on the spring, hopefully, like so. And that was all sort of locked in. So that should be pretty good. And then obviously we don't use the original top part of the spring. We will go to this version here, which will go like that, and that will give us the ride height adjustment. Now with the shock absorber, the Gecko instructions, which is weird being a cheap shock, are not very good. They have an instruction on how to set up the spring seat, which is good, but they don't have anything regarding the top mount on the shock. Now the original shock is basically held on with two rubber pieces like that. That will clamp the body of the car, and then the top mount is rubberized, where the aftermarket one, they've just got these two rings on top of the shock shaft. Now, I'm sure you could literally just clamp the body between those two rings, but being solid mounted might not be ideal. I'm gonna have a bit of a play with this before I fit it in, and just see if I wanna reuse the original rubber top mounts, or just clamp the body, which I'm not keen on. Let's have a better look. Okay, so this is where the top of the strut mounts to the body. We've got about a 10 mil cavity in there, and there's no way I'm just gonna clamp the metal washers onto that. I'm gonna use the original top mounts on the shock. Uh, yeah, it'll just help with road noise and that sort of thing. And I don't need a solid mounted shock absorber. It's a little bit crappy that they don't give you instructions on that. Anyway, let's get it all ready and start getting it back in the car. Okay, so first in is gonna be the spring, and this rubber piece on the bottom that does actually, as it's fallen off, that does need to sit inside the control arm a certain way around, so you do need to pay attention to that as you slide it all in. Just slide it back on again. Try and keep it all together this time. Making a bit of a mess of this. I wanna make sure that that spring mount is definitely in properly inside the control arm. I'm not sure it is. It's hard to come out, but she won't sit back in. Come on, get down in your home. <clears throat> okay, so a little bit of WD helped me get that rubber back in where it needs to go. Now it's just a matter of getting the spring adjuster in. of a pry bar, just want that to sit nicely, okay, spring is in place, everything appears to be seated properly, there are instructions to make sure that you do position this rubber seal in place, which we have done, and I made sure that that rubber spring seat is also good. Now I've left the adjusters exactly where they were. Um, and what I will do before I put the other side in, I'll just make sure that the same amount of threads are showing on this side. So they're at least even left and right, but I'm sure we're gonna have to make some ride height adjustments once we've got it on the ground. Okay, so I guess it's time to get the shock in place. Okay, now I got the shock going in. Can get it down into its mounts. Oh, God. Really? OK, 
Okay, so what I ended up doing there, as I pushed this strut into its hole, it's um, knocked the spring seat out, and then it crunched up that rubber. So we'll have to have an attempt two at that one. Okay, attempt two. What I ended up doing, I've actually refitted the lower control arm to the hub, and that's brought the angle of the lower control arm up so that the angle of the shock absorber is closer to where it needs to be, which hopefully will let it slide into the bottom hole properly without wedging everything down. And with that con out, with that control arm in, yeah, went straight in nicely. And you may have noticed there, I've reused the original rubber mounts for the shock. Okay, so that's as far up as it wants to go. But the shock is now in place. Now I'm just gonna get the top mount on. Okay, so I can't remember if I mentioned it on camera, but I've decided to use the original rubber mounts. So they are going to be clamping the shock in place. And I'm gonna use the supplied top nut, not the, not the original top nut. And that's just because I think they're slightly different threads. And I'll just get this finger tight. And I will have to do that up. Now, where the original shocks have a little six mil nut on top, these aftermarket ones, they have a flattened off edge. Hopefully you can see that there. So you can put a spanner on that to hold the shaft and then you can tighten that nut down, which I'm gonna do now. Okay, so that one's actually all done, tightened up, good to go. I've set the rebound adjuster to 11 clicks out, which is about halfway. It's probably gonna be on the softer side of what you can set with it. Now, something I forgot to mention, I've started doing the other side, I just got straight into it. Uh, the shock is out. When you're undoing the control arm bolt, this one here, you do need to, you do need to jack this up. Now that'll actually take the tension off the spring and then you can safely lower the control arm down without any craziness going on with a, a scary release of the tension. And I'll just show you what happens. So it's all nice and safe. All right, I'm gonna crack on with this side. Um, it's all pretty straightforward really, apart from just supporting that lower control arm. All right, I'll get on with it. Okay, so that's the passenger side rear one, all in, tightened down, good to go. The other thing that's gonna be left on this side is setting the right height, which we can't do until the wheels are on. So moving on to the front. Now I've got a feeling these are gonna be a little bit easier. Um, now I know some people do take the discs off. I'm gonna try and do it without taking the disc off. So this one, we're gonna undo the main bottom strut mount first, then undo the sway bar link pin, which is that one there, that also holds the brake line. We'll remove the ABS sensor, which is actually this one down the back here. This one here is the brake pad wear sensor. We'll get those two out of the way. And then just the three nuts that hold the top on. So I'll get on with that and I'll give you an update in a few seconds. So we'll take the main shock mount clamp bolt off first. That one's nice and easy. And hopefully it should just slide out. It has, that's that one there. Now I'm just going to get the ABS sensor out the way. ABS sensor is now loose. That has also got the, oh, you guys might not be able to see it. The ABS sensor is out the way and also the brake pad wear sensor. Next is the sway bar link pin, which is that one there. That is just a 17 mil nut, which holds the back of the link pin. That's awfully difficult to get to. And it's a 16 mil socket on this side. Drop the nut, but that's that one there. And that should now release the link pin. 
and the brake line. So that's all the actual bolts undone that are holding the shock in. We'll lower the car down a bit and get the bolts on the engine bay done. So we have th these three bolts that hold the top of the shock in, and you might not be able to see it, but there is one that's underneath the strut brace. I'm gonna undo that one first. Okay, so that one has come off. And then the other two, we should be able to get with the rattle gun. Now, just keep in mind that when I undo this last one, the strut will actually fall down. So I'm just gonna support it from underneath. And there we go. All right, so I can lift the car back up. And we can lever it and start getting the strut out. Actually, I may as well do this part here because I think I'm gonna have to lower it down to lift it up with a jack anyway afterwards. I'm just gonna pop, pop the sway bar link pin nut, and nut back on the link pin because I don't want to lose it. Okay, so from here, I'm hoping I can push it down enough to get it out without scratching anything. Okay, and that's actually quite tight. Um, I'll try and position myself a little bit better. Sorry about the camera angle. And the last lug nut, lug. Cool, that's probably not the best way to do it, but that's the way I've done it. Now, the strut is actually held in, like into a, a C-clamp, I guess. Now you can't get proper tools to do that, but if you don't have the proper tools to spread it open, you can just use a chisel, which you're not supposed to do, but that's what I'm gonna do. To me. And we'll just do it enough so that we can spin it. Okay, starting to get play. That is awfully tight, but I might just give it a little bit more. I'm being too gentle with the chisel. You want to try and use the chisel as little as possible to spread it. I think I'm just using it a little bit too gently. Ugh. Might get a spanner on there to wiggle it. Ah, it's come free. There we have one original shock absorber. Now we're going to put it side by side with the Gecko. Oops. So that is the front Gecko next to the front shock. And I didn't realize before, but these are actually sided. This little tab over here will slot into the gap in the back of that C-clamp piece. Uh, the only thing I can notice, the sway bar link pin is gonna be, I don't know, approximately 15 to 20 mil lower when it's connected into this one because obviously this is going to seat on the same C clamp position. So yeah that they haven't they just haven't made that in exactly the same spot. But I think there's going to be room for it to all work so that should be okay. Um, yeah. I'm gonna fit the fronts the same as I've done the rears, leave them how they've come out of the box. I'll probably set the clickers into the middle position like I have with the rears as well. But yeah aside from that you can see I mean, obviously this is a stiffer spring rate, but the extended length of the shock is a good three inches shorter than the factory one. So yeah, all right, time to get the gecko in. Okay, so gonna put the new strut straight in. That little tab there, I hope the GoPro is picking it up. That'll actually line up with the gap inside the C-clamp. And the reason that's there, it just positions the sway bar link pin mount in the right spot as well. So we'll slide her down in. Whew, okay, that's bottomed out. Good. We can now remove the 
，节奏。Let's come out. Now we'll put the, I'll probably do the first bolt first, and then we'll try and get this up into the strut tower. When I say the first bolt first, I mean the main bolt that holds the coil over in. Actually, no, I can't do that because, you know what? I'm gonna have to slide it in at the top first. I can't get that in because the bracket that goes onto that bolt for the ABS line and the brake pad sensor is connected. So I need to put the strut in first. Okay, so we'll try that. And yeah, we're about a long way away. Jesus, my Christ, that's quite heavy. And it's too heavy for me to do. So I'm going to lower the hap down, lower the hoist down, and try again. Okay, so I've got the hoist down a bit, and I've just now got the jack underneath the hub assembly, and we'll see if we can get it in place. And we're there. Okay, I'm gonna just show you guys something quickly. So, Jerome Jezza, where he saw the first coilover video and he'd mentioned how he set up his car and he did the location pin delete with the standard struts. I had no idea that you actually have a small amount of camber adjustment with the elongated holes in the strut towers, which is pretty cool. So, because I'm basically a race car now, I'm gonna set this up with as much negative camber as we can since I don't have a locating pin, but I'll get the nuts put on those. Okay, well I still haven't put the um, bottom bolt into place, but I just wanna show you something quickly. Now I just realized because this uh, mount is, sorry, the sway bar link pin mount is at a different height, I had to disconnect it from the other side to get it uh, to allow me to hook them both up. Cool. Even that is quite difficult to get the sway bar in the right position. Come on. There it is. Okay. Ooh. So I'll just do that finger tight. I'm gonna go and check the other side and just make sure I can get the other side in. There's a good chance the sway bar's just clamped on the sway bar bushes, which is why it's not moving much. But I'll do that. I'll get that bottom pin in, and then I'll give you guys an update in a second. All right, that is the front coil over in. Everything's tightened up. I've just double checked and made sure that none of the lines have been routed back the wrong way, so everything's got the correct clearance. But they are in there. And I'll tell you what, the more I've sort of had hands on with these geckos, the more I'm very impressed with the build quality. The only other coilovers I've ever really played with up close, actually there's a couple of other ones, but okay, the only other coilovers I've fitted to a car are BCs and peeding rods. Um, and these are definitely up there with the BCs, quite happy with it. I'm super stoked to find out the rears have the dampening adjustment, which I didn't bloody realize. That is one of the downsides of buying cheap stuff. The adverts just don't give you enough information. And actually I acquired on BCs and the, the salesperson sort of implied that they don't have rear dampening either. And I guess they've just looked at the shock. Anyway, we are at the point where I can put the wheels on and see what the ride height's like. So I'm gonna get on with that. All right, so all four wheels are on and this is the fully extended height with those geckos, which is kind of concerning. That's not a lot of droop. So we'll lower it down and we'll see how much too low it is. I'm thinking it's gonna be quite a bit too, but maybe maybe it's not too bad. Cool, makes me need wheel spaces pretty quickly. Shit, did we fluke it with the ride height? 
or are we just on the hoist? <laughs> That's why it doesn't look too bad. It's still on the hoist. Okay, I'm gonna need some blocks. So Hap actually gave us these when we bought the hoist for lowered vehicles. Um, keep it in mind, I didn't wanna lower this. But we'll see how that sits now. Actually. Okay. All right, it might have been pretty close before. So that's definitely come off the hoist now and it's about the same gap. Yeah, the hoist is definitely off. I don't hate that ride height. Yeah, the back's off as well. Sweet. Okay, we did fluke it with the ride height. I mean, it might rub, but I have now got a couple, well, I've moved the front of the strut in a couple of mil. That looks sick. That is a nice gap to the wheel but is it gonna scrub? Now I do run, these are F30 size tires. Yes, they were second hand, but they are a slightly larger profile than what should be on the E92. But, oh man, I dig the ride height, I like that. Huh, it's not rock solid. Hopefully you can see that. still bounces a little bit. That's good, I wanted it to be like that. I didn't want it to be stiff as hell. All right, I'm having a moment. Give me a minute and I'll give you an update in a second. Well, I am pretty damn stoked with that. Uh, I've ended up leaving it at the ride height that they've come out the box. I've measured all four wheels and they're all within a millimeter of each other. Um, I'm sure it's gonna settle a little bit. Initial thoughts, uh, I'm a little bit concerned that the fronts might rub because they did rub before on full lock but I'm gonna leave it and just see how it goes. These springs are so much stiffer. I've actually wound, so I had, the, I had all four adjusters set to 10 clicks out. Uh, I've now got the front set to 15 clicks out and it's just rock solid. It feels like the spring rate is just crazy. The front spring rate I think is 11 kilos and the rear is eight. I've wound the rear rebound adjusters in so they're only five turns out now instead of ten um, and it's stiffened up the back a little bit but I'm tempted to just take it for a drive as it is and see how it feels which I'm gonna do first thing in the morning because it's quite late here now I'm gonna have a tidy up I might try and get this video edited and yeah you guys will actually see an update in the next video which will be me in the morning taking on its first test drive so thank you very much for watching if you got any questions about putting coilovers in your E92, E90, let me know, it's pretty easy. I think I went through it, although this is the first time I've done it, so it probably wasn't much of a tutorial, it was more watching Andrew fit coilovers for the first time. Um, anyway, look, thank you very much for watching. Pretty happy with the geckos at this point, and I'll let you know what I actually ride like tomorrow. Thank you very much, peace.